everyone and welcome to this very special 123.ie TV preview of the World Athletics Championships taking place from the 19th of August to the 27th of August in Budapest. When we set out on our journey uh, to give back to communities around the country, sponsoring Athletics Ireland stood out. We're aligned on values. At 123.ie, we always, like our athletes, try to give better a try. And as an inclusive employer, it made complete sense for us to support the most inclusive sport in Ireland. This year, we have our largest ever delegation traveling to the Games, and we wish each and every one of them the very best of luck. Can we give them a big 123.ie round of applause? <laughs> Just to temper uh, the conversation and uh, keep, it, keep it realistic as well, these medals are very, very hard come by uh, at World Athletics Championships. Let me put that into context for you. In the last 40 years, we've had six. Uh, in 1983, Eamon Coughlin won gold in the 5,000 metres. And uh, our most recent medal, and who can forget, uh, the amazing Rob Heffernan uh, from Cork, who won gold in the 50-kilometre uh, walk uh, in 2013. Joining me today at 123.ie uh, studios, we have a uh, women in sports officer for Athletics Ireland and no stranger to 123.ie, Lillian O'Hora. You're welcome, Lillian. Thank you so much for having me again. And of course, we have Irish legend as well with us, David Gillick. And we will have a special report uh, from our man on the ground, Barry Diskin, who took some time to catch up with another Irish legend, David Matthews. David, you're a man of many medals. Uh, your own speciality, of course, uh, was the 400 metres event and the 4 by 400 metre uh, relay. Let's get the show on the road and talk about the amazing talent that is uh, Rashida Adelecki. I mean, this is her second World Championships, um, having broken her own uh, Irish 400 metre record with a stunning uh, 49.2 in June when she claimed gold at the National Collegiate uh, Athletic Association Championships. That's the NCCAs in the United States. First time an Irish athlete ha has ever won a title at that event. What kind of mental preparation will Rashida to be doing uh, in advance of these games and in advance of the events? Yeah, well, like Rashida, as you alluded to there, has had a great year. Um, and a lot of people might be aware that she's now turned pro, which essentially means in America that she's foregone her collegiate career. So she won't represent uh, her college, which is the University of Texas. She's made that decision to, uh, to go pro because under NCAA rules in America, you can't earn um, from your athletics. So basically, that's a big thing for her going into next year. So, you know, from a, a mental perspective, that's obviously probably weighed quite heavily on her to make that decision. She's had an incredible year winning the NCAAs in 49.2. That's a time that is the fourth fastest in the world this year. So straight away, you know, when you look at you know, on paper, she's up there, she's in the mix. And we will get into kind of the, the running side of it. But right now for her, you know, what's unique about Rashida is that she's had a big season over in America. And that finished in June. And now she kind of rested off that. She came back, did a bit of training. She raced the 200 meters, I think actually in Hungary earlier in maybe July. And then she did a 400 in, uh, in Monaco. Um, and now it's all about Budapest. So right now they're on a bit of a, a training camp. Um, the computer's programmed. There's not a whole lot of stuff she can do by this stage. It's staying calm, it's staying relaxed. It's, you know, having her own kind of routine, her own race prep um, and championship preparation because championships are a lot different than say going to a Diamond League or just a one race somewhere around the continent. This is kind of, this is your leaving cert. This is where right. it really, really matters. Um, so right now it's about chilling out. It's kind of trusting the work that's done. It's maybe kind of, that internal dialogue of just kind of trusting um, everything that you've done, trusting the people around you, your coach, um, and just trying to enjoy it a little bit as well. I always think when it comes to championships, and in my experience, was I just wanted the first round to come and get going. It's the it's the hours and it's the days. The waiting. The waiting, and that's where the mind can begin to kind of overanalyze things yeah. and looking at start lists and all that. So right now, it's just, you know, 
stay loose, stay relaxed, do a little bit of training, um, and just make sure you're ready to go. I can picture you there locked up in a Rubik's Cube, counting <laughs> down uh, <laughs> counting down the hours. We've, we've huge expectation, really, from this 20-year-old uh, yeah. sprinter from Tala, and particularly, I think, given that this women's 400-metre race is probably the hottest ticket in town. I mean, Sydney McCoughlin is out with a knee injury, yeah. so there, there, there is a good chance for Rashida here to yeah. get on the podium, right? Let's be honest, we love a bandwagon in this country, and I think, you know, <laughs> <laughs> in terms of athletics and you know you can see here her race from the NCAAs which again the NCAAs to put it in context is essentially you know the level of a world championship like all of these athletes are at the top of their game and so for Rashida to come into that championship and win just shows the, the caliber of athlete we're talking about here and you said 20, 20 years old is so young so bringing that into a championship um, into a world global championship is you know this is the this is the, the prep you know that you dream for um, and you can see here, even in a race as well, she's so strong. Uh, and this was something that, you know, this is her first year of doing 400 meters. Um, she's 100, 200 previous years, dabbled a little bit in fours, and I think that's really worked. Um, and it's brought this speed endurance, this side of uh, her game to the fore, where she's now able to kind of hold off, you know, athletes that, like, the athlete coming second there has run a little bit quicker than Rashida. She's actually okay. third ranked, you know. So to go into a championship and beat people like that, um, is huge. So, you know, when you're looking at Budapest, um, it's it's all there for her. Like, it is an open championship. You did kind of reference um, McLaughlin, uh, Lavrona, she's known now. Um, knee injury, she's not there. So the ranking goes up a little bit, uh, which is exciting. But again, it's how does Rashida come off the back of a tough NCAA season? You know, has the rest and recovery worked for her? For her? Has she kind of responded well to the little bit of training and can she go again? Because in athletics, we all kind of aim to peak once in a season. Mm. So to, again, to hold one peak and then go again in August, can be quite difficult, but um, she's got all the attributes and all the talent. Yeah. And a brilliant uh, nine days of coverage, and I know Barry uh, had a chat with David Matthews about that feast of coverage that we have. Uh, if you're looking for Rashida, her first round takes place uh, this Saturday morning at 8.35. Uh, and of course, in that race, she'll be joined by Tipperary's very own Charlene Maudsley. Um, how do you see it going, David? Yeah, again, you know, the way the heats won't come out until um, kind of maybe Friday. That's when they'll see where they are uh, and who else is in their race with them. Um, the thing about it is as well, it's seeded. So for someone like Rashida going in kind of highly ranked, um, it'll be seeded like that. Now, you know, Charlene won't be as seeded as high. So she's got to look at it as an opportunity of treating this as a final. This is it. I just got to go out and I got to execute my best race. Uh, and Leaving okay. certain English paper one. That's it. Nail yeah. it. You know, first step, off you go. Um, and hopefully that'll be enough to qualify. But for Rashida, she might have the luxury to where she can come into the home straight, have a little look to the left, have a look li to the right, and then just kind of ease off the gas and uh, and reserve as much energy. There is a little bit of a caveat, though, because Shawnee Miller-Webo from Bahamas, who was the Olympic champion yes. and defending world champion, she had a baby in April, okay? Um, but she's gone to the world champs. Wow. So she's going to go into this with no time against her name. So that's always a little bit of a lottery. She's so talented. She's one of the best in the world. So someone of a high ranking will get her probably in their heat. And that could be a little bit spicy. So okay. hopefully um, Rashida doesn't get it. Okay, mm -hmm. lots to look forward to then. So, And of course, Rashida and Charlene will also represent Ireland in the 4 by 400 relay. Yeah, really? you've got the 4 by 400 relay, which will come later in the championships. But we've also got a mixed uh, 4 by 400 relay. So two male, two female. And that's on day one. So Rashida won't be taking part in that okay. because her priority is a is is individual, but yep. Charlene will be in that. So that's on Saturday, and then Charlene will have a quick turnaround to come out the next day. So heats and final of the mixed 4x4. Four four. And that mixed by four, mixed 4x4 four four team, um, a world championship finalist last year, the yep. Tokyo finalist as well. So um, good crop of athletes in there. Excellent. Okay. Well, from Rashida and Tala, we move to Limerick and Sarah Levin. And we're delighted, of course, to be joined by our own Limerick friend, uh, Lily Ann. Uh, by any account, of course, um, Sarah Levin has had the most difficult uh, of years uh, personally. And I mean, just to look at her and observe her, um, uh, like you see that kind of extraordinary uh, level of resilience. Uh, Lily Ann, you know her really well. You've yeah. grown up with her in yeah. athletics in Limerick. Can we talk a little bit about her resilience as an athlete? Yeah, I suppose f for me, unfortunately, I'm the one who has always been coming second to Sarah for many, many years since the age of honestly 12. Um, but to see her now really coming to herself, it's 
a, like an absolute pleasure to watch and I think all of us take great pride in seeing how far she's come uh, this year but also obviously from from a young athlete um, she's always been tough as nails she loves competition she loves a challenge um, if people tend to maybe write her off or anything like that she bounces back stronger every single time and I think this year particularly we're seeing that like I said I'm lucky enough in Limerick to kind of have an all sneaky look and see how she's getting on kind of thing you know over the fence but um <laughs> she I was actually watching her recently enough just before nationals uh I, I, saw, I observed two sessions that she did and she was running with boys every single time and she was putting wiping the floor with them. wiping the boys like she was pulling away from like very good strong athletes like and just was able to knock it out and I think then we saw that in nationals she doubled up in obviously the hurdles and then she ran the 100 the next day yeah. like and she PB'd I think her running into the wind so that was like a hurricane basically for anyone kind of the, what she had to contest with she ran a 13.13 I think that should probably be a world record in itself because how fast that was yeah. um under the conditions obviously but then even then going in the next day to run the, the 100, she had three rounds in her legs, three warm-ups, yeah. plus the hurdles warm-up the day before and the hurdles race. Oh, and then we also got called to the line or we got called, we thought we were going to have heats in the hurdles. So at this stage on Saturday, Sarah has essentially three runs in her legs plus then six. And yes, yeah, she comes out with a, a PB. Against a hurricane. Uh, exactly, exactly. So yeah, I think we'll definitely be looking forward to an exciting Budapest and of course you're you're a hurdler yourself yeah. uh, by trade Lillianne how do you rate her chances and who's the who's the really tough competition we should be keeping an eye on I think if we're completely honest Sarah is in the most competitive era of hurdling that there ever has been um, last year like the world record was broken by Toby Amison who ran a ridiculous 12.12 um, you know, Toby's Toby's lining up in Budapest. So is Nia Ali from the United States, uh, Jasmine Comanche Quinn from Puerto Rico. Um, but I, I do think Sarah is very much capable of breaking the famous Derval O'Rourke's national record. Okay. Um, like even this race here in, in Stockholm, Sarah's isolated. Like she's in lane one. She yeah. She's running in her own race. Mm -hmm. um, it was rainy, it's a bit windy, and she even clatters the last hurdle and manages to stay standing. So if conditions go okay, if um, she takes her chances, which she absolutely will, um, like Sarah's more than capable of progressing. I like, again, looking at it from the outside perspective, the event has moved really, really fast in the last two years. And I think if you want to be making a final, she's probably going to want to run like a sub, 12 5 5 12 6 um which is which is damn fast you know i think the difference between first to fourth is going to be less than 0.1 of a second 0.1 of a second for us here is is actually the blink of an eye so if you blink twice that's going to be difference between first <laughs> and sixth yeah, and it's going to be that it's going <laughs> to be that quick you know what i mean but uh, like i said i think sarah will definitely she she thrives on rounds and and getting through the ranks and everything like I, that and you mentioned something there Lillian she was isolated she was in lane one uh, just for like people maybe not mm. necessarily involved in athletics or starting out their careers mm. in athletics and hopefully hi to all of the uh, Athletics Ireland members that uh, are watching the show and a big shout out to all of you guys um what, what's the best lane it's like, it really depends. Like, isn't like some people love to be in the middle, the glamour of it. Like, you know, people on my left, people on my right kind of thing. But then some people are so focused and Sarah is that kind of athlete I've seen over the years is that she's this complete intense relaxation, but it allows her to have that perfect execution because she's only sees her lane and she's not getting distracted by like anything around her. The one thing in hurdles is like, if she is in lane one, she's going to stay out of some of the ruckus that might happen in the lanes. People are right. going to be falling. It's so fast. Um, you know, you're on the edge all the time that like maybe she'll get herself out of a bit of trouble. I don't know. Which lane do you, would you? Yeah, again, like event wise, like so 400 lanes, three, four, five and six because you're in the mix. So you got yeah. people to the left, people to the right. Right. Um, but then the world record over 400 metres was run from lane eight. There you go. Mm. So again, sometimes running in lane eight, you know, because you have a stagger, you don't see anyone. So you run your own race. 
you know, so you can just execute. So that bit of solitude maybe in the Absolutely, mind. Absolutely, yeah. And yeah. just yeah. hearing training. And yeah, you yeah. run with the blinkers on, you just do your own thing. Um, Whereas in the middle, I suppose, you have that kind of peripheral You do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and again, it's kind of staying calm in those scenarios as well. Like the hurdles is slightly different because there's arms and there's legs and there's hurdles <laughs> going <laughs> everywhere. So, you know, sometimes maybe been out on the outside, I'm yeah. not a hurdler now, but again, on the outside, you might be, as you said, you're away from, from the madness. But um, the lanes are all dictated by the rounds as well. So if you win your heat, well, then you'll get a better lane in the semifinal and win the semi-final, you get one of the better lanes. So that's generally how it works. Brilliant. Well, round one uh, for Sarah Lavin is Tuesday, 22nd, and that's at 5.40 p.m. Irish time. And should Sarah progress, we'll be looking at her in a semi on Wednesday evening and, fingers crossed, a final uh, next Thursday. Uh, okay, uh, our number one athletics fan in the business, uh, Barry Diskin, uh, who is one of our brilliant 123.ie sales agents, is on the ground. And earlier, he caught up with the legendary David Matthews. Uh, let's take a look at what went down. Welcome to Inside the Inside Track with more of the real scoop and all the latest news from Budapest. And who better to join us than Irish legend David Matthews. What events are you most looking forward to yourself? Obviously the 800 metres is going to be up there. Yeah, in fairness, this is the, listen, there's 2,000 athletes, 200 countries, 49 gold medals on offer. We have 24 athletes there and nine days of action-packed uh, sport. You know, this track and field world championships is a true global sport, a global event. So, uh, you know, if there's something there for everybody, whether it's sprinting, throwing or jumping, and even from the sprinting side of things, we've Shelly Ann Fraser Price, you know, that diminutive figure from Jamaica, so flamboyant. She's going for a record six gold medal in the women's 100 meters. She is a phenomenal six gold medals. Her first one was won in Berlin in 09. That was Bolt's first medal. So when you think of the great Usain Bolt, he only has three. She's going for six. So she's a phenomenal athlete. She won't have it all her own way. She has Sharika Jan Jackson, who's, uh, who will be trying to dethrone her. Uh, so that's from the sprinter side of things. Moving up, we have a big graw here in Ireland for the long hurdles. Thomas Barr, our favourite over that. In the men's, unfortunately, Thomas won't be there with it. Picked up a slight injury. But we have Carlson Warholm from Norway, an absolute legend within the sport. Uh, ran a world record at the Olympics in Tokyo 21. Uh, he's returning to the track. He was beaten last year, so he needs to right the wrong. Again, he won't have it all, all his own way. Uh, he's stiff con uh, competition, uh, but so I'm looking forward to that. Field events is your cup of tea. We have world record holders, Olympic champions, pole vault, Armand de Plantis, Armando de Plantis, 621 world record. He's amazing. 621, higher than a double decker bus. Um, triple jump. Yulma Roas from Venezuela. She's jumped 1574. Well worth a watch. And finally, the real strong people as well. Ryan Crowser in the shot put. He's thrown over 23 meters. And our own Eric Fabers is in the shot put too. So listen, we haven't even spoken about walks, marathon, all the throws and jumps, and not to mention the really. So listen. If there's something there that doesn't catch your fancy, Barry, you're, you're goosed. With all these sort of uh, young upcoming athletes, I think it's, it's more than fair to say that we've seen a huge growth and interest in athletics over the last number of years in both track and field events, as you mentioned, and some huge performances with national records now regularly uh, being broken. How can we continue to grow athletics further in Ireland and how important is um, our involvement and sponsorship here at 123 .ie for Athletics Ireland. I think I'm 40 years in the sport, okay, and uh, I haven't come across a time in our sport where I've seen such a rich vein of talent on display. Uh, our membership is soaring, we're approaching 70,000, so membership is booming. Our high performing athletes are performing on the European and the world stage in a truly global sport. Um, our pipeline, I think, are targeted. Uh, targeting our schools because there is Rashidas, there is Kiras, there is Kate O'Connors out there in our schools. Maybe a targeted program in our schools, a tri track and field event like that can unearth this talent mm -hmm. amongst us. But there's no doubt that the partnership with 123.ie and Athletics Ireland is a, a match or would you say a race made in heaven and the fruits are there to see. 
So it's a very, very, very positive outlook and the pipeline is so strong. Brilliant, brilliant. Look, thanks so much for that insight, David. Uh, back over to you, Anthony. Okay, thanks, Barry. Um, I'd nearly pair you guys up for a goggle box uh, special uh, on these championships, having uh, seen you have a chat as well uh, before we kicked off uh, the show. Uh, Kira McGeehan, uh, who is one of our 123.ie ambassadors. Kira, Kira's going to head to Budapest full of confidence, having smashed uh, Sanyo Sullivan's long-standing mm. uh, national mile record last month with an incredible 4.1458. Um, she's definitely one uh, that we'll be watching um, out for, as well as Kate O'Connor, who is another one of our 123.ie ambassadors. David, coming to you. Kira's up first in the 1500 mm. metres on Saturday afternoon at about 12 uh, 15 pm. How's the heat looking? How's the competition shaping yeah, up? Yeah, again, like you're talking about one of our athletes who has had a tremendous season. And, you know, again, she's run in the Diamond League, as you see here. She's, again, some of the best in the world. Faith Kipiagon from, from Kenya has broken the world record over 1500 and, and mile, of which um, Kira was in those races. So, in this scenario, there's a pacer, so you can see how far Kip Yegon is ahead here, and everyone else is kind of just on that train and just going as fast as they can, and essentially get pulled around for fast times, and that is what happened uh, with Kira. She's off the back of last year, where she had a great season, um, you know, a 356 over 1500, and obviously getting a couple of medals at both Commonwealths and uh, and the European Championships. But this is a sort of level we're looking at here. So when you say competition. Faker Gagon is going to win the Worlds unless she uh, she falls, okay. essentially. Okay? Um, it is a fight for all the minor men. Heard it here first. Mm -hmm. And that's where the race is. You know, you can see here in the pictures, like she's celebrating and everyone else is still coming down the home straight. Yeah. That's how good this lady is. So for Kira, you know, it, she's having a great season. She's coming into it in probably the best form of her life. She's PB at over 800 meters as well. So again, that's really, really important when you come into uh, middle distance in championships because you have gears. So a bit of pace because we don't know what way the race is going to be ran. There's no pacemakers in, in global right. championships. So everyone will be looking to see what Fade Kipiagon does. Okay. And she will tend to maybe dictate the tactics. Will she just go to win the medal or will she actually go to run a fast time? If she does, well, then the tactics will completely will change. change. So but you're Kira, back in the pack then, you're back and you're in the pack. working on the tactics there. She's going to head. Yeah, it's a bit of a fight. You're watching the other athletes. Now, there is a lot of Ethiopians who are very strong. There's Laura Muir, who would probably be the benchmark for Kira over previous okay. years. But Kira has beaten her um, this year, which is a big thing, I think, for, for Kira in terms of her confidence. Um, and going into a championship, it's, it's a, she's had the run-in that you would dream, dream of, you know. But now it comes to championships. And it all comes down to the tactics, staying well aware of what's going on around you. Um, and trying to keep yourself in the mix, make sure there's no slip-ups in the early rounds, um, and get to that final, and then it's uh, it's all all to play for. Brilliant. Um, of course, uh, Kira is going to be joined in that 1500 meters by European under 23 medalists, uh, Sophie O'Sullivan. Uh, no guessing who Sophie is. Uh, her famous mother, Sonia, uh, and Sarah Healy. Uh, they've already provided Irish fans with uh, massive highlights, two of the season, in fact, with their performances in Espo in Finland, and most. Most recently at the 123.ie National Track and Field Championships in Morton Stadium in Santry, uh, where they went toe-to-toe -to -toe, uh, for gold and silver once more. So best of luck uh, to both of those two. We do have an extraordinarily big uh, delegation, and we'd love to spend more time uh, talking about each of our fantastic uh, qualifying athletes. But being mindful of time, can I move on to uh, Andrew Koskaran? So Andrew broke his own 1,500-metre uh, record with a sensational performance uh, at the Silesia uh, Diamond League meeting earlier in the season. He finished fourth uh, in a, a world-class uh, field in a time of 3.30.42. So this Balbriggan man will have his sights firmly set on at least making the, the 1500 meter final later in the week. Um, yeah. David, Lillianne, this is this is really one to watch. Yeah, I think with Andrew, you know, if we la look at the last two years, he had made the European indoor and outdoor final. Um, this year, you know, he, as you said, like he's definitely going to be eyeing up a, a final. Um, he's ranked 15th. So I think he's in the top 15. To qualify for the final, you have to be number like in the top 12 so again it's a tactical race anything could happen um 
I think over the last few years as well with Andrew, he's kind of, he's shown a maturity in his running. You know, the packs, because it's a tactical race, you, you could start going off at the pack and leading off, but then you, you could die. So I, I've noticed with Andrew recently, he's kind of hanging back off the pack and he's kind of slowly chipping his, his, his way up the field as things progress. You would hope the fact that, you know, he made semi-finals, I'm sorry, finals before previously running 3.35, with 3.30 in his legs, you would hope that, again, he'll make a final. I think if he makes the final, that would be a massive mm. achievement in itself. Um, but I think he would only see making a semi-final. I think he'd be a bit deflated after that. So it's okay. it's all to play for. It's all to play for. And again, the difficulty of these, these are not Europeans. These are worlds. Yeah. It's at another level. Any thoughts? Yeah, about again, you? like it it's a competitive event, you know, um, as Lilian alluded to. Like he, he's highly ranked, but I think probably nine of those athletes ahead of him have all ran inside 3.30, you know, so it is a step above. He's in the form of his life. Um, we saw pictures there of running well indoors. He's carried that form uh, into the outdoors. He was bitterly disappointed by not making the final um, in the European indoors mm -hmm. earlier in this year. Um, I interviewed him afterwards and he was he was devastated. So that's the level um, that he set for himself, you know, and he'd be going here with his own aspirations of making a final and I think um, and I think he's he, he's well capable of doing so but it comes back to tactics and mm -hmm. you know he is a good racer he's got a good head on his shoulders and um, he's competitive and he's cute as well he'll be looking right. around to see what's what and again how the heats go he'll be managing that watching kind of fastest losers and all that sort of stuff that goes on um, so that's what you want in a championship you know bit of a Bit of a cute fella in there mm. looking around. And how much do of that goes on? I mean, b between, you know, Andrew's coach and himself, do, will they, they'll sit down, they'll obviously watch the other heats, will they rewatch them, will they look at... It's, it's, to be honest, it's, it's like, uh, <laughs> I'd say, horse, horse riding, the runners and racers, they will know uh, everyone that they're competing against yeah. and they will analyse the entry list, they'll analyse the heats and they'll know, okay, potentially where's the fastest loser's going to come from, you know, what does that mean to them in their heat, you know, whether they're first heat, second heat and all this. So all that does go on. Um, and interesting enough, in Tokyo, like Andrew made the semi-final mm. and he got in through like yeah. the fastest loser. But I asked him that question. I was like, did you know the times in the previous uh, heat? And he says, yeah, they're just screens in the in the call room. So they're aware of what time was run. So they know if you're in one of the, the, the latter heats, what time needs to you need to get to get okay so, so that that's means your target that then. that's your target and yeah. the race will dictate itself then knowing that yeah you know? so that's you've done all your leaving cert subjects you've only one left you reckon mm -hmm. you've done well enough to get points for that stage it's just you know yeah. do what you have to on, do yeah. right yeah okay so andrew uh, is in round one on saturday evening just around 6 p.m just after uh if he progresses uh that semi-final which we hope he gets to mm. will be on sunday evening with the final fingers and toes crossed uh, on Wednesday. Um, lastly, today, we're going to look at um, uh, Brian Fay. And when I say lastly, by no means least, uh, the Dubliner produced the absolute race of his life. Uh, I think it could be said to finish second uh, in a massive top quality uh, field last month, crossing the line in a time of 13.01.40. Uh, to break the record, by the way, uh, another national record breaker here, to break the record of Alistair Cragg, mm. uh, which had stood since September 2011. So Brian runs out in round one of the men's 5,000 metres at 6 p.m. on Thursday. Yeah. Uh, for a novice like me, Lillian, and maybe for other people uh, who, who race in div or different field and track events and might be as clued in to, to this one, how would you describe this kind of a race, the 5,000 metres? I mean, it, it's not a sprint. It's <laughs> not long distance. It's, it's somewhere in between. For me, it's definitely yeah. long distance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I ran on a treadmill yesterday for a minute and I actually thought I was going to have a heart attack. So it's, it's definitely long, but in fairness, with Brian, like he's had an incredible season and everything like that. And I think it shows how far he's came over the last few years. Um, I was actually speaking to his like strength and conditioning coach, Ger O'Donnell. He's involved with a lot of like the Dublin Track Club. And, you know, he, there's a robustness now to Brian as well. Like he's after taking, I think, like 20 seconds off his PB from last year. Um, like a lot of people would think that that's probably from just like flogging himself, training like really hard, high intensity stuff. Like, but in fact, it's actually just a consistency of staying in one piece, um, you know, under the guidance of Jerry and Phelan to be able to sustain that level of training day in and day out and like be able to chip, chip, chip away. And I think when you have that consistency, that breeds confidence. And it is going to be a hard task for, for Brian, definitely. I think, again, to make a final, he's going to have to run his PB. But again, if we look at tactics, 
anything could anything happen. Could happen. It, it, yeah. The race could go out pedestrianised and everything like that, or and then all of a sudden they'll all be going off like the clappers near the end. Like, but it, again, it, it's hard to. And you have to be know. ready to adapt to that yeah. on the day, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. But again, I think if you look at the likes of Andrew and the likes of Brian Fay, you know, there's strength coming into their running now, and I think again for. Brian, he'll be trying to hope that he's probably one of the top Europeans in there. It's going to be a, a race dom dominated by the Africans. Um, so if he's kind of ranked high up with the um, Europeans, it would look very well for next year Brilliant. going into Rome and everything mm. like that. Like So, um, yeah, lot all to play for. All to play for. And um, like the interesting point as well regarding next year. David, how do you assess Brian's chances? Again, I'd second everything Liliana said, you know, He's an athlete that is um, in the form of his life, running the fastest times. Confidence is a massive thing with Brian. And I think going into a championship with the times that he's posted this year and, the, and also the athletes that he's beaten, you know, confidence is huge to him. And that's what's required when you go into a championship when tactics are at play. You know, backing yourself to make that go, make that gap um, and, you know, go like the clappers, as Lilian said, because that's what's required. Because you could have a massive burn up in the last 200 metres, you know, essentially a sprint. Um, and you have to be in the mix and ready to kind of go for it because that could be the difference with qualifying and not qualifying. But I think the way he's running this year, um, he's got absolutely nothing to lose. You know, 13 minutes is so fast. You know, you relate that to any park runners out there. That's 13 minutes going around your local park run. It is super, super fast. Um, but in saying that, it's very competitive at this level and there's a lot of people sub-13. So, like, Brian's just got to be top of his game. He's got to be aware of what's going on around him and make sure that he's constantly in the mix and watching um, and making sure that he's high up the pack because if there is a break, if there is a drop of pace, he's got to make sure he's in that mix. Okay, brilliant. So that's Rashida, uh, uh, Sarah, uh, Kira, Andrew and Brian. Um, I couldn't let you guys go without putting you on the spot. Uh, looking for a couple of predictions here. You can go first. Oh, <laughs> ladies first, I suppose. Um, <laughs> predictions in terms of performance-wise, I think, I do think Sarah Lavin's going to break uh, Derbyl Works national record great and that'll be i think a, a brilliant thing um I just, rashida probably is going to break another national record it, it is what i could imagine um medals are you gonna call it a medal? <laughs> you you mentioned it so i'll, I'll throw it back throw to it back you. To yeah, yeah. there in the medals <laughs> um medals yeah i i think uh, like look on paper it's probably the strongest team we've had in terms of medals for for years and you alluded to, to that at the start um one medal Colour. <sighs> when you say one medal, who are you, who are you thinking I, of? I, Rashida. I think if I was to look at, yeah, I think Rashida is probably our best show for a medal. Um, I would say. Uh, You're looking at. I me. don't know. Uh, yeah, I and don't of know. course we'd be. It's ten years since we got any yeah. medals, so yeah. we'd we'd yeah. be delighted to. See, this to has have been recorded, so I don't. You know, I, I got to get it right. This has been recorded. I do think though the thing because it's championships, anything can happen. You know, it's and it. you know with rounds, with, you know, various seasons, performances, the weather, the conditions, everything like that, you, you do hope it'll bode well for Irish athletes. Um, I get off the fence. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, get off the hurdles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I, like uh, like David, I, d I do think there is scope there for, for a medal. We're optimistic. We're very optimistic. We're optimistic. Okay, yeah. well, well I'll, I'll say uh, Rashida for to, to nick a bronze. To nick a bronze. Okay, I think we can give a round of applause for that, guys. We... We, we take that outcome. Okay, so that's it from 123.ie TV on this uh, World Championships uh, preview. Uh, a feast of action from the 19th to the 27th. Uh, at 123.ie, uh, no different to our incredible athletes, as I said at the outset, we're always here to give better a try. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed uh, this preview, that you found it valuable, and uh, feel the positivity and the optimism coming from both uh, David and Lillianne, especially thanks to you both. Equally a special thanks uh, to David Matthews, uh, who spoke to Barry earlier, and of course, all of the team in Athletics Ireland. That's it from us. Uh, enjoy the championships and best of luck, Team Ireland. Go for it.